Amen. Now listen, uh, there is a, 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 there is a strong prophetic and apostolic anointing that's being, uh, uh, that's coming forth in this time. I hope somebody's hearing me today. There's a strong wave, as the Lord was talking to me earlier today, of the uh, apostolic and the prophetic, a new strong wave of the apostolic and the prophetic that's coming forth in this time. Make sure that you're ready for it. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about it today. Amen. Listen, I want to help somebody today with some of these things. Somebody share the broadcast today because this, this is going to help somebody. This is going to help somebody. Bless you, Latonia. Listen, I can remember when the Lord introduced me to the apostolic anointing. Bless you, Shanika Jackson. I can remember when the Lord introduced me to the apostolic anointing. He even challenged me to enter into some things in a season. But I was unable to receive it. I hope somebody's hearing me today. I was unable to receive it. Because there's a spiritual uh, 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 principle. There's a spiritual principle that most people aren't aware of when it comes to shifting dimensionally. Ah, we're already in the revelation today. I pray somebody receives it. Bless you, Rhonda. There's a spiritual principle when it comes to shifting dimensionally. I pray that we don't miss it. When the Lord first introduced me to a, a new apostolic dimension, when, when, when the Lord began to take me out of charismatic and evangelistic places, ah, I hope somebody's hearing me today. Listen, when the Lord began to take me out of these places, I actually rejected it because I didn't understand the principle that goes along with shifting dimensions. Meaning that there, there's always a test. There's always something that tests your spirit. And it tests your spirit according to the knowledge that you hold. And it tests your theology. How you see, how you think, and how you feel about God. It tests your faith. Listen, there's three things that I just listed. It tests the knowledge you hold. It tests your theology. And it tests your faith. Look at that. So when you're ready to shift dimensions... You better be ready for your knowledge to be tested, for your theology to be tested, and for your, your, your faith to be tested. If you can't endure these three tests, watch this, you're, you're, you'll remain in the dimension you're in. You'll never shift, you'll never transition. I'm talking to somebody who's ready to shift, who's ready to go into new places, go into new places in your in your gift, new places in your business, new places in your in your household. Amen. I'm looking for someone who's ready for God to shift them. Because in reality, the the Lord wants to 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 break somebody's theology the lord wants to break somebody's theology some of us we got so comfortable in what we were taught and it doesn't mean that anything that we were taught was wrong it means that what we were taught was just a foundation and because we didn't understand and recognize 
that it was a foundation We tried to build with the stones that God ordained to be a foundation when in fact God wants to build on top of that foundation. Amen. Imagine somebody laying a foundation and then taking the same bricks of the foundation to try to build on top of the foundation. Well, you're pulling from the foundation to build on top of the foundation. It's a it's someone, it's the picture of someone that fails to have the revelation that it, you're just on a foundation and there's more that God wants to do for you. Let me help you. There's more bricks that the Lord wants to give you. When in fact you zoom out of that picture, you see that's just a foundation. There's a whole plot of land that God has given to you that he wants to begin to build and establish things upon in your life. So 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 sometimes we need to give God room to expand our thinking, to expand our vision, to stretch out our capacity for what we for what our vision can hold for what he wants to do for us. Amen. So uh, uh, uh the, so the Lord will test three things. He'll test your knowledge, he'll test your theology. Really, he wants to break your theology and he'll test your faith. Where you fail to allow these things to be tested is where you'll remain in the dimension and on the level that you're in. You'll never transition. You'll never experience faith to faith or glory to glory in those places. Amen. Amen. So when the Lord first challenged me to shift in some things, listen, I had been taught for years some things. I had even been teaching some things and I had my own revelation about some things. I had my own perspective, my own ideals, even my own theology in a way. And listen, I, I was excited about it. Uh, 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 it, it blessed me. And, 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 and the Lord had blessed me. He had favored me and he had gifted me with the word. But I failed to recognize that upon even the word that the Lord had already distributed to me, there was new word that God wanted to give me. Listen, y'all, we just in my studio today. I'm just walking around drinking a cup of coffee and boom, I just turned the camera on. So welcome. <laughs> this isn't anything formal. I'm just bringing y'all into my day. That somebody can receive out of this anointing. Amen. I just walk around here with the Lord and pray. And God gives me vision and begin to prophesy over the regions in Jesus' name. So if somebody came on, they were expecting something formal. Uh, I'm sorry to, to, to inform you that you won't find that here. God is looking to shift somebody out of their normal. Amen. So I wasn't able to receive it. And 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 a season passed. I wasn't able to receive it and then a season passed. And when the season passed, I entered into another season. And how I many know there's places where you'll miss things from the Lord and, and every now and then the Lord will do this thing. He'll bring it back around to you. He'll bring it right back around to you. Oh, that's just his grace. That's his faithfulness. Somebody share the broadcast today. He'll bring it right back around to you. But listen, he won't bring that thing around forever. My wife, she came in into the church on a Sunday and she preached a message called Renewed and Recycled Opportunities. What's that? That's God's grace. That's his grace that in spite of you, your stubborn self sometimes, he'll bring stuff back around to you for another opportunity to have another go at it. And listen, you got to be careful because listen, there's some grace that can't be repeated. Even when the Lord brings some stuff around back around to you, uh, the, the opportunity might not be exactly the same as it was before when he first brought it. 
Amen. So you got to be careful. But nevertheless, bless you, Dante. Welcome. Nevertheless, the Lord will bring things back around to you in spite of you. Sometimes we suffer losses. Sometimes time is delayed. That's why we want to pray for the Lord. We want to pray for the Lord to redeem the time. When the Lord will bring some things back around to you for another opportunity to enter in. So I wasn't able to receive the new dimension God was sending to me. A season passed. I had lost some time. And then the Lord brought another opportunity back around to me through another person, through another situation. And this time I recognized it. And when I entered in, I entered into that new dimension and man, it blessed my socks off. I began to see the Lord in a new light, but God had to allow me to go through a season of breaking before I could actually enter into the new dimension, before my mind could actually begin to be able to receive the new vision and perspective of God that he was trying to deliver to me. Listen, I'm here to tell somebody on this Friday that your vision and your perspective of God is too small. God is trying to expand your vision and your perspective of him. So I, 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 I had to have a breaking happen. So then I enter into the new dimension. Wow, praise, I, I start to look around, man, blessed my socks off. Uh, I was amazed at what um, I discovered in that new dimension. I was amazed at the new uh, revelation that the Lord was delivering to me. I never saw God like that. Even though I thought I saw God, I, I, I didn't see that side of him like that. And I didn't know that there were more sides to this thing, that this thing was even yet deeper and that I hadn't even barely scratched the surface that in fact, that, 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 that faith to faith and glory to glory wasn't just a pretty sentence, but it was an actual thing that you transition and move in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to prophesy deep today. Bless you, Manicia. So uh, once I began to see and look around and say, man, the Lord is good. I didn't know there was more to this thing than meets the eye. All of a sudden, I became ashamed. I became ashamed because I remembered now that there was a season where God was trying to deliver me into this new dimension and I rejected it. There was a season where God was trying to come into a closer relationship with me because that's really what a new dimension is. Uh, listen, when we say new dimension, it's not outside of the spirit, it's inside of the spirit. What does that mean? It means that every new dimension is a closer relationship with Jesus. Every new dimension is a closer relationship with the Lord and it's a more intimate communion with the Holy Spirit. So all of a sudden, I'm in this amazing place. And while I'm in here looking around and I'm seeing all of the new things of the Lord around me, all of a sudden, my heart is grieved and I'm ashamed. My heart is grieved and I'm ashamed because I realized that, in fact, I wasn't just rejecting the dimension, but I was rejecting that level of intimacy with the Lord. I was rejecting Jesus on a level. I began to repent. Lord, forgive me. You, you sent someone to uh, encourage me to enter into some new things. You sent an invitation to me through someone to draw even yet closer to you, but I was not able to conceive it. I wasn't able to receive it because I wasn't able to let go of my old mindset. I wasn't able to let go of my current 
theology. I wasn't able to let go of where my faith was on that level. I wasn't able to let go of the knowledge that I was leaning on as a crutch and enter into the new revelation that you were trying to deliver to me in a new dimension. Ah. I hope somebody's hearing me today. Every time that God wants to shift you, he'll challenge what you think you know. And y'all have heard me teach this over and over and over again, and I'm just going to continue to say it. Why? Because God has given our ministry great revelation. And with that great revelation comes great transition through broken and empty places. Meaning that God wants to challenge what you think you know. He wants to break the theology that you hold and he wants to continue to shift you. Amen. I pray somebody receives it. It's an amazing thing because revelation is progressive. It grows. Revelation is progressive. It changes. God doesn't change, but our respect and revelation of him changes because as we get closer to him, there's new dimensions of light that reveal new sides of God that's always been there. But to you, it's a progressive revelation because it's an ever increasing faith. It's an ever increasing faith of different dimensions of the Lord, new sides of the Lord. That's why the Bible describes his love in dimensions. It says the height, that we would know the height, the depth, and the width of his love. Hmm. I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to give somebody some time to share this because we're about to prophesy. Amen. Uh, I see a lot of people in the body of Christ they're they're failing this test <laughs> listen i see great men and women of god failing this test god is trying to deliver a new dimension to you you've been holding on so much to what you think that think you know ah you're, you listen the minute that you think you know something you're in trouble The minute that you think you know something, you're in trouble, you're stuck. The Lord showed me two things this week. Welcome to my studio. God bless you guys. Listen, y'all. This just my Friday afternoon prayer hour. Uh... I'd probably be in here doing this if y'all wasn't even here. So welcome. Just come on in. I just cut the camera on. I keep saying that because I want somebody to relax. Grab a cup of coffee. Grab some lunch. Sit in the presence of the Lord with me. Pray. Intercede. Press in. Somebody get free today. I saw two things this week. Dante says he's sitting down with some burners and some ginger ale. Amen. Bless you, Chamelki. Bless you. Listen, I saw two things this week. I saw people and I saw the call of God. And the call of God looked like this to me. There was an invitation and there was a positioning. There was an invitation and there was a positioning. What's that mean? It means that when God, when, when, let me, let me say it this way. When you begin to encounter a new dimension, it will challenge you. When you begin to encounter a new level, 
it will challenge you. And there's one of two ways of responding to this new dimension or this new level. One of them is either you begin to see what you don't yet understand. You try to classify it. Oh, I'm helping somebody today. What's this thing? I don't understand this. I need to classify it. You're already wrong. The moment you try to classify it, you're wrong. When it comes to the things of God, you can't classify it. Listen, everywhere someone sought to classify the things of God is where a religious structure was formed. Ah. <laughs> you can't classify it. Somebody put in the comments, you can't classify me. You can't classify me. The minute you try to classify something, you've put a religious stamp on it. So listen, you see something you don't understand. You try to locate it. You try to classify it. What's this thing? You can't classify. So you're, you're already wrong trying to classify it. You're trying to put it in the box. It doesn't look like what I'm doing. I haven't seen it like this before. I don't understand it like that yet. What, what, what's this thing? So listen, the, the mind of pride will do this. Watch it. The mind of pride always persecutes what it doesn't understand. The mind of pride always persecutes what it doesn't understand. Because surely no one else could have something greater or function in something greater than what I am doing. That's what pride says. Uh, surely someone else can't be tapping into some things that I have yet to uh, uh, tap into. That's the mind of pride because the mind of pride is actually, a, a, is actually a, a jealous spirit that, that functions in the field in which the workers see the others coming in and receiving the same wages in which they say, Master, but I've been here all this time. How are you paying them the same, if not more wages than you're paying me? And Jesus is like condemning that spirit. Because it's a failure to see and recognize God's grace. It's a failure to see and recognize his grace that in fact there's a generation that's rising. There's a new wave of apostolic and prophetic voices. There's a shifting of the guard that's taking place. God is taking the limits off. We're seeing a company of people coming forth with a voice much like the world has never seen. I hope somebody gets on board with it. Listen, we're behind. <laughs> I'm just one of those prophets that's trying to catch up, trying to keep up with what the Lord is doing. Listen, I don't want to fall behind. There's a time coming into the body of Christ that we haven't seen before. There's a move of God that we haven't witnessed before that we're about to become privy to. Where we're going to begin to see the sons and the daughters of glory come forth with great shining light where people will begin to walk as children of God as the Lord had intended from times past. That's what the sons and the daughters of glory are. They're a mature company of believers that are walking in the gifts and the callings of God as the Lord had intended. No longer tiptoeing around spiritual things. No longer scratching around blind, unable to see. But in fact, the cry coming from this company is, we can see. We shall prophesy. We shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Welcome somebody. This is just my Friday afternoon. <laughs> Y'all just got a quick vision into what I do in here in my downtime. My downtime. 